Welcome back to Watercolor, Art Therapy with Watercolor. Again, my name is Kim Nguyen. I'm an art therapist at uh, Diversis Health, as well as at uh, the Fine Arts Center uh, at Cora College. Um, I'm teaching there with the veterans and fallen soldiers families. Um, today, um, I want to especially thank um, Ma Max Maddox, Kurt Wundy, and special thanks to Lori Jarvis at the Colorado Spring NAMI chapter uh, here that's sponsoring this program. So hopefully in the future, we can do more of these projects at helping uh, using creative techniques to help people healing. Uh, today, we are using, the, again, those three basic brush strokes, the flat one inch brush, uh, the medium, round brush and uh, rigor, the script brush. And then I also um, want to share the uh, fine tip marker, black marker that we will be using uh, on some of this. So today is about intention. Uh, what is it that you want to release to express, to let go of what is be, become, can become toxic to your family, your body, <clears throat> your soul, your inner being, uh, so for a wet brush technique, I will demonstrate this. Uh, it's built on some of the techniques that in previous weeks. Uh, so for the intention of having peace. And then dry brush technique, we will learn the, um, you know, the different uh, sides of the strokes. And then from there, it's like a dance on the first surface of water, of paper, right? So from there, I will demonstrate something like this to write and then to decorate. Um, here are some of the, the letterings that I will be demonstrating. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like, take practice. Um, here's some of the um, practice that we will do, be doing. All right, so I'm going to switch over to this camera on my table and we will be working. Uh, here we go. So start out with medium brush and I have some paper here. Um, this, and I always spray my palette of paint. And what you want to do is pick any color. So I'm gonna pick some brown, sienna brown here. And the, the purpose here is to control your pressure. So you want to hold it fairly lower on your brush and using your pinky to anchor your hand. So then you can move along. So start out with fine line. Okay, let's try to make it as even as possible. And then a little bit, uh, you know, apply a bit more pressure onto the brush and pick up some paint. Okay, a little bit harder. See the width of the stroke is a little bit thicker. Once you have that and it move back and forth because you have your hand anchor on the, the surface of this table, it's easy. And you see how diverse, how you can use this one brush and create the many different width of the strokes. Okay, so now we're going to go into the ribbon stroke. So this is like a dance, move back and forth, up and down, back and forth. So start out slowly, press down, lift, press down, lift. And this you can really go slow. You don't have to go fast until you run out of paint and uh, add more water to your brush and continue. So the, the ribbon effect, you can pull long and then come up or make a short, like a leaf. Uh, turn your paper around. See how it can be rhythmic and like a dance. Uh, 
Um, and I do practice. So, you know, um, this is just a scrap piece of paper so I can go back in with different color, clean my brush and continue. So this time I'm not pressing. So my, the width of my ribbon is not as big. See that? And now you can start um, practicing the letter. It's like you're doing cursive. Okay, so here are some of the, the stroke that I, you know, on this that I've been practicing. I guess my uh, favorite color is magenta. So anyway, practice some more of this so that we can go to uh, the, um, the, the, the dry brush technique. Before we go to that, I want to do this um, wet brush technique because it takes a while for it to dry. Okay, so with this, we use the um, one inch flat brush. I'm going to put a piece of paper towel uh, underneath and I'll show you why. Okay, so first just back and forth, um, really wet. Make sure that you cover all the surface. Okay, so not to worry. So then turn it over. This trick, it will keep the paper stay flat. So wet both sides and the paper towel on the other side, dab up all the excess water. Okay, so now I can take the paper towel out and the paper will remain flat. Okay, so now I'm going to create the um, background color. So look at this. I did that with bright, uh, bright green, yellow, and dark green, and um, teal green. And then the last layer is with the um, black silhouette. So I'm going to change the different um, colors. So I'm going to start out with uh, magenta, which is my favorite. OK, so here's the wet. And continue to kind of use the width of this, pull up. OK, what you do is you wetting the background, but you creating some texture lining with it. OK. OK, and then don't uh, clean your brush, go to blue. So the next color, no, just a little bit of paint. OK, can, doing a sideways so that you have the thin stroke coming up. So this way, because of the damp um, paper, the blue is blending into the magenta. So it's creating this some depth to it. Okay, no worry about um, details. You can continue to be kind of um, blending the brushing the, the paint up, pulling it up. And in the meantime, so I'm going to use some teal blue as well, a little bit. So notice that I didn't wet the paper at all. So I'm continuing to lay, put the paint down first. So it's off of it and then turn sideways like this and pull it up, see? Okay. I think I have, it's good enough background for now. So I'm going to set it aside for it to not completely dry. It will take like overnight to completely dry, but it will be dry enough that I can put some other layers on top. Okay, put that aside. So now we're going to do dry brush technique. I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit. Okay, so after practicing all the ribbon strokes, the rhythm, uh, up and down, and it's up to you. Uh, this is with intention, right? 
Um, we learn a lot about ourselves when we paint, when we create. Now, how patient am I? How um, meticulous, how broad, um, you know, seeing the whole picture. Uh, so let me pick up, let's do some orange, a lot of paint here. So, um, smashing down the, the paint so that it's only watercolor paint instead of just some um, speckle. There's some still, but okay, see how close, how tight I'm holding the brush right here. And then I'm going to do, uh, let's see, uh, which word? I'll start out with my name. So. And uh, this technique is like show how the variety of the width of the lettering you can do, okay? So you barely touching the surface when you're doing the, the thinner stroke. And then you can go back there and kind of I want, I like my, with the circle of the dot. Okay, so here's the. Remember the old days when we have to, I don't know, those of you who been there that use the old fashioned pen and dip in ink, that's how I learned to do my lettering. Okay, so now I can go back and kind of like fix all the, the width of the letter. make it more even. Okay. So that's my demonstration of to do the variety of the width to create the letter itself. Okay. So here is some of the one that I did with different technique and I this one I decorated with um, vines and then some flowerings and some gold specks. So I splatter some gold specks there. And so, which I will demonstrate right here with this word that I already did it earlier. And um, the different way that you can decorate. So here's another piece that I did for a different one. Okay. So this one, I will use the rigor. So wet it and then creating some kind of ground. So I'll use dark brown right here and some shadow so that it makes sense that it, there's some any leaves. And then I'll start out with light green, just a little bit and holding it right here. So your, your wrist is more flexible and you can kind of airbrush it first before you're actually painting it. Uh, you can go um, whatever direction. So that's the first. And then let's get some darker green. Um, I don't have to, because I'm going from light green to dark green. I don't have to uh, clean my brush. Okay, and then I'll go to some blue, dark blue. Might blend into the lettering. But let's do purple. And this is your um, design, your intention. You can do whatever. So I think I'll, I'll stop right there. I'm going to use this um, ground brush and I'll use orange because the orange and um, blue are complement color. So um, it will stand out. So I'm going to create some um, that um, 
brush stroke that we practice. So up and down like this. So turn your paper, not your body. I got some other color. I don't know what, what the color. I'll, I'll pick it up, I'll lift it up later. Okay, so here's one more. Let's do just three. Hello. There we go. Okay. So I can show you. I think it's from the, what I did was clean the brush, just a damp brush and go back in and lift. So pick up any excess of the darker in the petal and wait for it to dry before I go back with some, um, some orange. So in the meantime, I can go do another color. Let's do magenta. So Let's do some wildflowers. I'll tap it here first so that spread the brush out. So see, and you know, you can do whatever. So I this one I'm doing the same technique, but the cluster is far apart and I put they put in the middle some gold um, metallic watercolor paint in here. And then with this one is um, the divine and some small leaves and some gold specks. So depend on whatever you want to decorate uh, your letter with it, okay? Um, let's do one with, um, I'm gonna use this one because I want to show you how to do um, I think I did it in previous, I don't know which week it was, but I want to show you how to do um, lavender. Okay, so let's do some green. Some light green. Okay, a um, little bit of sienna brown, just so that to kind of anchor the word here. So here is, so pick up some purple and then pick any of the stem and go one in the middle, back and forth. There's your lavender. Do one underneath here, and let's do one from this side. So you you can create the stem later. You don't have to. There we go. Okay, and then because um, the <clears throat> the letter is on um, um, yellow, let's do some red. I'm gonna do just speckle of the flower. So I'm, I'm holding it straight and just pound out lightly, very light, so that you have those textures. Fun, right? I mean, I can spend all night doing this. And then, um, there we go. Okay, so let's get back to the wet brush technique. Here is, little, it feel cold, so it's damp. Uh, so, but it's, it's dry enough that I can go back. So I can go using this, this uh, rigor magenta first. And <clears throat> it's, this is still like background. So I'm going to go in and do some lines. Uh, Okay, make sure your bottom is thicker so you can, your line is straight 
then you go back and you um, thickening your line. Uh, the trick to do straight line is that you anchor your hand down and pull down. So you're not shaky. Okay, so now I'm going to create um, some branches and foliage of the pine trees. <clears throat> Notice I'm using the rigor just to flare out. So, and it's your tree, right? This is your tree. You can um, thicken it, make it like flare out as much as you want at the bottom. Oops, I got into purple. So let me fix it. Go back in and do purple. Okay, back to magenta. Okay, I'm doing this quick because I don't want you guys to get bored seeing me doing this, but <clears throat> you can do lighter. So I just add water and do some just silhouette of them. So it's lighter, it's not as dark. I would call this like ghost tree because I'm going to do on top of this like some black silhouette. So I won't spend too much, but then it's, you know, it's different than the first layer that we did. Okay. So breathe, enjoy this. Uh, just take your time to you know, do this because the end the result will be worth it. And on top of that, you get to practice how to do tree in the midst of in the forest. Okay, and it's also, again, your choice. You don't have to put as many trees as this. Okay, so then wait for it to dry a little bit. I'm going to dab on it a little bit because I want it dry faster so I can show you the silhouette. <clears throat> okay, for the black um, uh, silhouette, like the front, um, I'm going to do it upside down the, the, um, the trunk so that I'm pulling toward myself. Uh, I found it much easier. I think one, one of the previous week I showed you how to do this. Okay, so same thing. Go back and pick up some paint and so I'm not going to do as too thick. I want to like do very sparingly.
Okay, so I did some more, but then now I want to show you how to use the marker, the fine tip marker. So first of all, with the um, uh, this lettering, you can like write in your personal message, like breathe in the goodness of life. Something like that. So you can write around the lettering. Uh, I think here I did this. And then this is one of the projects that I did with a student and have them write their name and then go, write their qualities, what they're good at or what their, um, their identity. So I wrote some, some of that. Okay. So you use some. You can also adding on like fine trees, like these are thin lines. <clears throat> so this you have more control. And you, you see some of the tree kind of and the branches kind of hang off. This, you can use the marker to kind of like display that. Okay. And also sign your name and your artwork. Always, always sign your artwork. Well, I hope you enjoyed this um, eight weeks <clears throat> of projects and uh, hopefully we can do some more. And I always do the <clears throat> Uh, year at the end of my signature. All right, take care of yourself. We'll see you.